Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Alright, looks like we'll be heading into the sealed event here. Alright, what are we working with here? From Guilds of Ravnica we've got Midnight Reaper, Soul Dryer, Expansion Explosion, pretty powerful if we can cast it. Response Resurgence is fine. So some reasonable rares there. Then in Ravnica Legions we've got Nikia, Bedevil and Verity Circle. So some decent rares. No like uh, top tier level rares, but some playable ones for sure. Let's take a look at our entire pool. So we'll start by just looking color by color here. In white, I've got some pump spells, Panther, Judgments, times two as a nice removal spell, Stalwart as a nice mentor creature, Rock Charger as more aggressive cards, and Unicorn and Messenger, Exaltation plays well if we make some tokens, and uh, Archway Angel, so some decent white cards, although I'm guessing that aggro decks are going to be somewhat difficult to build in blue. We've got the Phantasm, all these kind of keyword synergy cards become a lot weaker in this format since we only have half of the packs with the Surveil mechanic. So I doubt Phantasm's going to be good enough. Uh, so some okay cards here, nothing special. So blue looks pretty mediocre, at least in the single color cards. In black we get Deadweight as a nice cheap removal spell. The Reaper, Price of Fame is an excellent one. And then some more filler cards. So black looks okay, but not very deep. And then in red, we've got a Command the Storm, has nice splashable removal. And that's about it. And green looks pretty deep, although the card quality, not so much. Double opening gates can allow for some crazy mana fixing. Some random filler creatures, nothing special really. And then we get to the multicolor cards where we've got double griffin. It's gonna be nice in multiple decks. Double Ors of Guildgate, the Mirror Guildgate for fixing, and Knights, which might actually be decent in the sealed format. A bunch of different lockets. In Izzet we have Electromancer, Cyclops, Expansion, and that's it. And Rakdos just a bedevil. A bunch of gruel cards. Bunch of Boros stuff. So we're a little bit all over the place here. So nothing immediately jumps out. We're probably going to end up in some th sort of 3-4 uh, color monstrosity. We've got a ton of mana fixing with all the gates. The open the gates if we want to be in green. If we go for like some sort of 3-4 color deck, what's going to be the core of the deck? What are going to be the primary colors? White's got some decent cheap stuff. Could go like white black as the core, splashing a bit of red and a bit of blue. Griffin's also castable with just white mana. The only green card I'm excited to splash is like a Savage Smash, maybe a World Soul Colossus. There's not a ton of good green cards, because like Nikia, I don't think we're going to be interested in playing if we have a ton of non creature spells. I guess we could do like four color, no green, or maybe just a touch of green, but. If I'm just going to play a touch of green, then I'm not going to play open gates, which takes away a ton of the mana fixing. So let's take a look here. What? How does a four color no green deck look like? It's probably going to be base black white, so I probably don't want too many like aggressive red cards, but we'll see. So Bedevil might make it. Not sure about the Electromancer. So I've got a bunch of the white cards. Not sure how many creatures we have and if Exaltation is going to be good enough. And the Unicorn. How good is Archway Angel? Probably good enough. And how many of the blue cards do I want? Not too many. 
It's like Verity Circle could be good if opposing decks are slow enough. So that's a kind of a maybe. And there's not many other blue cards I'm interested in other than some of the multicolor ones. So I could also just try three color Mardu without any blue or green. We do miss out on Expansion Explosion, but otherwise we get to play most of the cards we want to. And then our mana base is going to be a lot more solid as well. So maybe that's the way to go. Some sort of Mardu deck. So we get to that weight. Reaper, Playcrafter is probably good enough. Price, Racketeers, maybe Transport. And then Red, Commander Storm. So Black, White, Splash, Red. Splashing for Bedevil. Uh, this is castable with just White. Splashing Commander Storm. How does this look like? Looks reasonable. Probably don't need all the lockets. The unicorns may be cuttable. Exaltation also may be not at its best. And I've got a decent amount of removal here between Deadweight, Response Resurgence, Double Judgment, Bedevil, Price of Fame, Command, and then a decent chunk of flyers as well with Double Senate Griffin, Rock Charger, Archway Angel. So this deck is looking uh, pretty reasonable. Gotta make a couple of cuts maybe. And then our mana base can basically be one mountain a Boros Guildgate and a Gateway Plaza to support Command and Bedevil. Don't need a ton of reds. And then we've got double Orders of Guildgate for fixing as well. Could be 70 lands plus maybe a Locket. Or Curve is relatively high. And then I could maybe do without the Rank Dose Lockets. Or I could play the Rank Dose Locket to have an extra red source. Although it's going to be a bit more difficult to sacrifice to draw cards later. So I think I prefer Ores of Lockets and Mountain over an extra Swamp and Plains and the Ragdos Lockets. Since it's just easier to cash in the Lockets for cards. So this would be 40 cards. Anything in the sideboard that I left out. How good is Blade Instructor? Don't have a ton of 2 drops, it's pretty mediocre. Pack Beast's also probably not necessary. And we've got enough removal that I don't need to play a conditional one like Bring to Trial. Pegasus is also pretty medium, don't have a ton of like mentor synergies to go with it. The Exaltation could be okay, just if we have a bunch of random ground creatures we can pump up one of our flyers to get in a bigger chunk of damage. We do have some afterlife creatures with Racketeers and Knights and transport, so Exaltation could be fine. And what else? So Expansion Explosions, one of the more powerful cards we're missing out on, but it's kind of difficult to fit in blue, and our other blue cards are pretty mediocre, other than maybe the Variety Circle, if the format is slow enough. It wouldn't be super difficult to splash blue for Variety Circle alone, since we have like Demir Guildgates, Demir Lockets, but I don't know if it's really necessary. Deck seems relatively consistent the way it is. I'm not sure about the Unicorn, since again we don't have a ton of early creatures to take advantage of the ability. But we do have some tokens which do play well with it, so Unicorn could still be okay. If I were splashing green, World Soul Colossus would be a consideration. If we splash both red and green, Savage Smash would be nice. Don't think Hammer Dropper is quite necessary. Bit of synergy with the Playcrafter and the Afterlife creatures as well. And pretty consistent mana base, just black, white, splash red. With uh, three red sources for essentially two red cards. So yeah, don't hate the look of this. And then our mana base. Um, do need double white for these griffins. So it's heavier white and black, but not by much. 
So right now, probably want to go plus one plane. So how many white sources does that leave us with? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten-ish. Six, seven, eight, nine-ish black. That seems decent. Yeah, we also have the locket for an extra black and white source. All right, so we're pretty far from casting this Bedevil, but otherwise we've got a reasonable hand. How spread out can a sealed mana base be? Well, you can spread it out as much as you want, but uh, at some point you're going to get punished. Not sure if it's correct to play Stalwart over Recruit, but if we draw like one of our three drops, then I might want to curve Stalwart into the three drop into Griffin instead of Recruit, and if that three drop is like a Rock Charger, I can start mentoring as well. All right, let's get in for four. Don't really want to play this play crafter. Judgment also a little awkward when we're on the aggressive. Same with response, I guess. So sadly, just have to say go. Like play crafter would still make him discard a card, but it's not relevant enough. Maybe next turn I can just use it to kill the next creature they play. Biomancy to bounce. Alright, that's annoying. Sets us back a bit. So opponent could be holding up a 3 mana counter spell. Probably still playing the griffin here. A warren to bounce it, fair enough. Alright, now I'll just play the griffin. And then the Scry, do we keep the Recruit on top? It's not a bad draw, because I can play Stalwart plus Recruit in the same turn. So I think we'll keep that on top. And Drake. Attack into it. And then Response. And play stalwart. Trollbred Guardian. So now the Playcrafter lines up pretty well. I can go recruit into Playcrafter and then sack recruit instead. And get in for five. And we're a red source away from Bedevil. Still have a summary judgment. Not the best, again, when we're trying to apply pressure, but uh, still good to have. It's also reasonable to attack with everyone. Just deal six if they eat the stalwart here. I think we'd rather just go for the trade. Uh, summary judgment only works on tapped creatures. Alright, opponent explodes. So, we had a relatively aggressive start, and I guess it was good enough. So that's also one of the upsides of our deck, is that we're relatively conservative with our splash, so we're relatively streamlined for a sealed deck, perhaps. So we can sometimes get free wins just by curving out. Alright, we're on the play. Got that red mana for Command Storm, missing the white for Messenger. So this is a pretty s slow hand, kind of grindy with Afterlife and Playcrafter, but we've got most of what we need. So we'll keep. Don't have the 2-drop this time to kick things off.
So there's a white mana. Suppose I'm fine just uh, trading Playcrafter here. Alternatively, I could play Locket to just kind of ramp out his Racketeers. Opponent will keep back Hybrid, and then I can maybe play Crafter or Command. Because the sooner we get to Racketeers and play, the more likely we are to connect with it. Opponent just uh, straight up Gruel here. Do we need to change our plan? Can go Recruit plus Playcrafter, keep the Playcrafter. If I play Racketeers, it gets blocked pretty easily by either one of their creatures, so yeah, I guess double spelling here is not bad. And I'm happy with whichever creature they sacrifice. And I think I'm going for the trade. If they have a comma trick, maybe it's not great, because we have Commander Storm to punish a comma trick. But I do want to get rid of the runner, since I want to clear a path for Racketeers, but I guess they wouldn't be making this attack if they didn't have a comma trick, presumably. And they hovered pretty aggressively over their hand when I made the block. Alright, I guess I'll take three. Rhythm. It's potentially a scary card. Yeah, we'll play Racketeers, and then the hope is that they keep a creature back and we get to command. Don't really want to race the Gruul deck. Might need to play Crafter on defense to trade with a hasty creature they play here. Boar. As a 4 4. So we're happy to block the Rubble Belt Runner. So they might have a 1 mana trick, but then. I get to command the uh, boar and then connect with the racketeers. So this could be a storm strike, for example. And there we see it. All right. Discards a white card. Has the officer? Not exactly what I would associate with. A card you want to splash. Ooh, hasty recluse. No, never mind. Opponent makes it a 7 6, maybe wanting to protect the last card in their hand. Can double spell, we can run out the plaza plus one more creature here. Could also double block the recluse if that's something we're interested in. So I'll play the griffin. Scry towards another removal spell. Say go for now, and then we'll see how aggressive they get. Of course, Recluse has to attack. Double blocking is reasonable. Could just trade for the runner, take seven. Don't have a ton of answers to the Recluse. At six toughness, it also survives summary judgment. The five damage from response resurgence isn't good enough. Think we try and trade. Hope they don't have any tricks. How good is the Racketeer? Racketeer's not amazing, but it's playable. It's worse than the Ministrants at 3 mana. But any Afterlife 2 creature is pretty strong, usually just getting those two Spirit Tokens can make a big difference. I'm gonna just do the same here, play another Griffin. See what's on top. Another gate we can bottom. So that's two gates. And yeah, I'll attack. Like, we don't know for sure with this Rhythm in play if we're supposed to keep some creatures back. But I also don't want to give the opponent infinite time. Ouch. Well, that's probably game over. So that explains why they gave the Recluse a plus one plus one counter. They just wanted to protect the Worm from getting discarded by the Racketeers. Although Bedevil was a decent pickup. So we're not dead yet. But with the Rhythm, our opponent's probably favored going into the late game here, as every top deck creature will be even more powerful. Alright, oh, <laughs> I 
I forgot the flavor text from Rubble Belt Runner that never came up in Ravnica Legion's draft is actually relevant here. Oh, that's a bummer. I guess we have to chump then. So I could have attacked for two. But now I guess I can trade for the Gorgon, so it worked out. Nice, we're still alive. But uh, having to chum block feels bad. And a hasty Pegasus is going to be game. So their white splash is a little bit baffling to me. Splashing for an officer and a Pegasus, but... Uh, we'll never know what other white cards they have. Alright, what about this hand? Seems okay. A bit slow here, not much going on turns 2 and 3. But I guess we can play the plaza, make sure that comes into play. Maybe give Panther Death Touch. Alright, blue black. Lands are good. So we can cast our Bedevil if we want to next turn. And get them for two. Panther beat down indeed. Hoping to pick up some more creatures, flying creatures especially. And Grudian attacks with a shade. Don't really want to bedevil the Grudian, so yeah, and I also don't want to attack into it. So I guess we'll just chill for now. I can summary judgment if I need to. So I could block the shade if they pump it, I can judgment to waste their turn. Which is nice, wasting their mana. Although I guess I would rather kill the Grudian, given the choice. And they've got a Grotesque Demise instead. That works for me. So now we don't take any damage. Slowly working our way up towards this knight. Opponent seems to be stuck on three. And there's land four. Shade gets in, take it. Not gonna bedevil even if they pump. Wanna save it for something bigger. Alright, I guess that's worth killing. Otherwise it gets rid of our Knight of Last Breath as well. So Resurgence plus Angelic Exaltation could do some interesting things. Probably not gonna come up, but uh, worth pointing out. Could kind of wombo combo the opponent. Opponent's got white mana as well. And a scavenger. That's fine. So we can response if they try and block here. Or just play a creature pre combat. And attack for six. So exaltation pretty decent here with two afterlife creatures. also decide to sacrifice the racketeers. 
So there is a world where we can kind of uh, wombo combo the opponent with Resurgence and Knight sacking the Racketeers. Let's say our opponent is somehow tapped out with no blockers. I draw a land, I can sack Racketeers, make two tokens. So I'll have three tokens total. Four creatures with Exaltation, so this attacks for eight power. And then attack for twelve. Right. Binding on the Knight also removes the activated ability. I guess Playcrafter would be a pretty amazing draw, letting us sacrifice this as well. So I've got some outs, and it's still an extra creature for Exaltation. So now if I attack with Racketeers, it would trade for Scavenger, which I think is a fine trade, since it leaves us with a bunch of Evasive Spirit tokens. So I don't think I pulled the trigger on response if they do block. And they're kind of tempted to block, because otherwise the Racketeers happens. Don't think we have a reason to hold lands other than maybe discard. But if we draw Locket, we want to be able to play and sack it at the same time and maybe still play stuff afterwards. Sphinx, now that one we need to get rid of, although they get to surveil too if we do. And uh, this would attack as a 4-4, so it would still actually trade. So I suppose we could just send in one token and still hold on to the response resurgence. But do want to keep Resurgence in mind as well here, as a way to potentially close out the game. Opponent takes four. I guess I'll keep land in hand now. So let's imagine next turn we play Resurgence. Then we force them to chum block with the Sphinx. Although now the Imp makes uh, that a little bit more complicated. Sphinx attacks. I guess I'll kill it. But yeah, I could have cast Resurgence, attacked for 4, and then attacked for 7. Forcing our opponent to chum block with at least one creature. But we're still doing fine here, we get to attack for 4. Doesn't have a great double block. I'll keep the lands in hand to maybe make it more uh, tempting for them to sack the Imp. When in reality, we just have a bunch of lands. Opponent is down to four. Although Camster's Insights, pretty strong here for them to refuel. I wish we had one of those. And that way to kill a token. All right, that's a setback. Hopefully they sag the Imp. Doesn't sack the Imp, but a Midnight Reaper to draw. Alright. It's good enough for me. Reaper doesn't draw cards if our Spirit Token dies, but... Uh, Angelic Exaltation doing some work. So, Playcrafter probably still our best draw. We would get to sacrifice a knight, make three spirit tokens, and draw a card with the reaper. As well as making the opponent sack a creature. Jumpstart chemistress discarding instructors so they have all spells. Or well, they did before the chemistress. So opponent looks like black-white splashing blue for Etrata and Sphinx. That's more reasonable of a splash. And a chemistress. And Griffin, want to play that pre-combat for uh, the Exaltation. Bottom that. And yeah, I guess uh, Reaper's attacking. Suppose I could also attack with a token in case they have like a summary judgment for the Reaper in, in response to the trigger. I would rather have them kill the token. And it's still big enough to force a chum block. Yeah, there's a summary judgment. The Reaper would have drawn us a card, but I'm guessing having the Reaper in play is more valuable. Centipede. No attack. 
So Griffin can attack. 6-5 requires a chum block. Angelic Exaltation, definitely the MVP here. Sever Strands, does that keep them alive? If I Judgment my own creature, then if they don't have anything else, they're dead. Since they're taking lethal, eh, let's just let that happen. Draw a card. And if we draw any creature, they're still dead. I can't use a Knight's ability with a Law Mage's Binding, otherwise I would have happily sacrificed it. All right, we got there. Reasonable hand. Yeah, exaltation's very good if you can be the aggressor. If you're on the defensive, then exaltation doesn't do much for you. But in that game, we had kind of the early board presence. Up against the Grixis. What's our play here? Do I respond just to kill the informants? It's probably okay, we've got Playcrafter and Price of Fame as more removal, and I do want to keep chipping in with this recruits, and then we also get to play Guildgate, so we get to curve into Griffin instead of having to maybe play a Swamp here. Burning Tree Vandal. It is nice to see kind of these cards out of the different guilds coming together in a, a format where you usually don't see them together. Seeing a Gruul card out of a Grixis control deck. Vandal attacks. So we don't have any great blocks on this Vandal next turn, so it's gonna keep looting, which is annoying, although I guess now the Stalwart would technically block it quite well. Although it's not a very mana efficient play. So maybe I do still play Griffin and then let them hit us for two. I could keep the recruit back on defense. Because our hand is relatively strong going into the late game, but our opponent also discarded consigned to the pit, so their hand must be pretty stacked with uh, expensive cards as well. So not sure what the best approach is here. Let them loot again for free with a Vandal. Because we're also not guaranteed to be able to block with a Stalwart if we keep it back. So I guess my play is going to be play Griffin, keep Recruit back on defense to block Vandal. Uh, don't really want Unicorn here. What guild would I join? Interesting question. Well, for my my own personal safety, it would probably not be the Rakdos or the Gruul. Yeah, the Izzet can get pretty crazy too. Yeah, Orzov also sounds like maybe not having the best time. Maybe like a, a Selesnya or a Simic. If we want to play the Plaza, we're limited to playing a 3-drop or a 2-drop. A Wrecker, not the easiest to block. Could just trade it for the Playcrafter. That seems reasonable. And then play our Plaza. This Angel's going to gain quite a bit of life, which is nice. I mean, you don't say it out loud if you're gonna join the Demir. Gotta keep it secret, you know? Zero points, uh, considering the removal, Scorch Mark, pretty good. Let's just play an Angel. Not a removal spell. Grotesque the mice. Three mana removal, killing or six drop doesn't feel great. 
but I guess we're both on empty. And the Prize of Fame lets us uh, surveil twice, so that's nice. Don't think I'm killing the boar. Can probably take a hit at least once or twice. Keep this for something juicier. Alright, I'll attack and then Judgment the boar. I'll do the main phase in case I've got some weird pump spell. Oh, I guess I'm still on the first strike here. So now this only deals 3 damage instead of 5. Didn't matter. Alright. Steamkin, not too threatening here. Sure. So, a real grind fest here. Trading removal back and forth. Alright, don't think I'm trading 2 damage for 4 damage, so just gotta hang back. Alternatively, I could Price of Fame the Steamkin, if it's gonna grow more. They do have a lot of red cards in there, so they seem Black Rats, Plash Blue maybe? I think I'm just gonna stay back here. If they grow the Steamkin, I'll probably be forced to Price of Fame it. Alright, that was a nice surveil too. Basically drawing two cards here. Alright, now we can start attacking. See if this resolves first. Don't think there's a reason to play la I guess they could have a quench. Let's not get quenched. Although it didn't seem like they had a counterspell. I'm okay offering the trade here, now that we have the Reaper in play. And they can kill a token with a Footlight Fiend, since it resolves first. Any Sweeper we should keep in mind? Eh. With a Midnight Reaper we get to draw more cards anyway, so even if they Ritual of Sudas, I'm not too upset. Uh, triggers go on the stack in order of active, non-active player first, so the non-active player's trigger resolves first, and uh, then our trigger. Also when the Footlight Fiend trigger goes on the stack they need to select the targets, and the spirits aren't in play yet at that point. So even if they resolved in the reverse order it still wouldn't work. Alright, so far so good. 3 and 1. Let's keep it up. Uh, this hand is not great. Missing the white mana. Don't have any creatures for exaltation. So I don't think we can keep... No, this is a bit better. Might just bottom the Bedevil, which we can't cast without double black. And hope that Deadweight's good enough interaction. I can go turn to recruit, turn three deadweight, turn four griffin maybe. If I draw a swamp and our opponent plays something more than two toughness that we need to kill, I could regret bottoming the bedevil. Not sure here. I'll try this. One's got uh, fancy new lands already. Do I dead wait to locksmith? They could have some spectacle cards in there for all we know. Although most of them are black. Otherwise, I would be tempted to maybe wait a turn. Although, if we hit our land drop, I'm gonna miss out on playing Griffin. Eh, let's just kill it. 
It's a combination of wanting to play Griffin if we had a land, as well as maybe not enabling Spectacle. Alright, so now we get to play Griffin. Yep, that's a good one. So don't have to trade a Griffin for a Legionnaire and can just uh, block with a Messenger. And yeah, there's Acrobat, so they would have been able to spectacle this last turn if we didn't deadweight, and again it also would have died to the deadweight. So I think Griffin's attacking and we'll keep uh, Recruit and Messenger back to have some extra insurance. They seem to also have a trick for one red, could be the first strike trick, could be the split card, plus two plus two or three damage. Not sure if there's other tricks for single red we need to worry about. Carnival Carnage uh, as well, I guess. Yeah, you're right. Sentinel's Mark. 6-4. So now if we go for a double block, we get punished by the Storm Strike pretty badly. And we have a command in hand, so I think I just block the Re Legionnaire, make him use a Storm Strike on the Messenger, and then take six. It's not so bad. All right, we'll have to wait a turn on command. So I guess we'll just chill for now. Could attack with the Spirit since I'm probably just blocking the Legionnaire with Griffin. But I could also threaten the double block with Griffin and Token on Acrobats. Don't really want to take six. Also don't really want to chump block. Maybe I'm supposed to chump with the Spirit. I doubt our opponent would have blocked if we attacked with the Recruits. But probably not worth the risk. Demoting the Griffin. Alright, now I'm forced to chump I think. Buy ourselves more time. Alright, Angel's a nice one if we can get to it. So I should main phase to see if we need to keep back Recruit as a chum blocker. Hope they can't save it. And now I'm probably attacking with both. So if we hit the non tap plant, we're pretty stable. Ooh, risk factor. That's a good one. So if I take it... Then they can jumpstart and then we'll be forced to let them draw. The downside of letting them draw first here is that they could draw into like a haste creature to uh, deploy next turn. So it could be better to take the four first. But if I miss my land drop then I'm just dead if I take four. So given that we're gonna let them draw anyway with at least one risk factor I guess I should decline in case I miss my land drop so I don't die. But hopefully we just draw land and then with the second risk factor we can just take four. And Gerd. Yeah, that's the downside. Now they get to attack with a hasty 10th Street Dodger. Whereas maybe they wouldn't have been able to before. And we didn't draw the land, so we're just dead now. I guess we're technically not dead. Can chum block and then fall to one and let them draw three more cards. But our odds of winning this one are pretty low. Yeah, I mean, a risk factor was definitely at its best here, being at such a low life total. It is good in aggressive decks, no doubt about it, but it's not always amazing. Alright, 3 and 2, let's see if we can salvage some more wins. 
the goal is usually to get to six to make bank or gems. All right, we're on the draw. Yeah, we'll keep this. We've got plenty of early interaction with Summary Judgment Playcrafter and then some powerful late game cards. Don't love having these in our opening hands, but uh, still a keeper, especially on the draw, as we'll be more likely to hit our land drops. Being on a draw makes our judgment a bit better against opposing two drops as well. Definitely want to kill that since, given the playcrafter, any small creature they have left in play they can kind of keep around. Not gonna run out playcrafter by itself. Next turn we can play Griffin. And then we can go maybe recruit into playcrafter. And hold on to the Playcrafter. Racketeer seems great too. Plays well with Playcrafter as well. And with Knight of the Last Breath. Could actually be tempted to trade here, just to clear a path for the Racketeers. Trade now, opponent might be stuck with some clunky mana. Next turn play Racketeers, and then if they have a blocker, just a single blocker, I could go Recruit plus Playcrafter to get rid of it. Or just Playcrafter by itself. And our late game is quite strong here. Well, Fairy Duelist punishes us pretty badly for that line, and now the Playcrafter also looks pretty bad. So that was kind of uh, the worst case. Probably still playing Racketeers though. 1 2 also lines up quite well against all the 1 1 Spirit tokens we're about to make. So the Duelist uh, was a pretty big setback. And a Blade Juggler too, so... The 5 color mana base is getting it done here. I guess I attack with the Racketeers, trade it for... whatever. And then I may end up sacking a Spirit Token to the Playcrafter. Not a spectacle card, perhaps. Well, at least her opponent's not doing much. So I guess there is a cost associated with uh, playing five colors after all. Alright, next turn we can bedevil that. For now just get in there with the spirit token. And play Reaper. Could have also played Reaper, attacked with everyone. Don't know if that's worth it. Opponent casts Roots, we get a Bedevil, and they're just dead here. Yeah, opponent with uh, an interesting gate deck. They went pretty deep. Maybe they have some nice payoff cards for all those gates. Since there are some cards that reward you for gates in um, the Guilds of Ravnica sets, the root of course also in Guilds of Ravnica where the gate theme was less pronounced than in Ravnica Legions, if you get the right sealed pool it's possible that maybe some of those gate synergies uh, become um, good enough that you should try and build some sort of 4-5 uh, color gate deck, since there's like the equipment that can be pretty strong, uh, there's a Guild Summit, of course, which wasn't present in Ravnica Legions, but was in Guilds of Ravnica. So if you get a few of those, then I could see trying to force more gates into the deck. Reasonable hands.
This uh, Thief of Sanity spells bad news, although we will be able to deal with it next turn at least. Alright, hopefully next turn we get to Price of Fame. I'm not gonna risk playing Senate Griffin to just have our opponent kill it and attack once once again with a thief. We're not quite in emergency mode where Thief of Sanity has Death Touch for players, but if they counter the Price of Fame, then uh, we could be reaching that territory. More flying creatures. I guess Summary Judgment works too. Although it's much less mana efficient than Price of Fame. So I'm probably still leaning Price. I guess it's close, like Price is more flexible in that we can also target something that's not necessarily tapped. Although we will probably be on the defensive in the near future here, with our opponent just playing a Bartizan Bats. And maybe the Surveil 2 can help me find a red source. So let's kill this while they're tapped out. No red sources. So we'll bottom both. Alright, so our opponent on blue, black, red, white. So at least four colors. Maybe playing the gate just for gate synergy, who knows. Gateway Plaza gives us red mana. It's a little awkward here that we can't play it alongside the Griffin. So I suppose we could also summary judgment to Bartism Bats to kind of mitigate the damage. And then play Griffin next turn. As well as having access to these other removal spells. And then I gotta think whether or not we wanna play the judgments right now to get uh, 5 damage as opposed to 3. Or if I wait in case of, I don't know, a counter spell. I've got to figure that if they had a counter spell, they wouldn't have tapped out for the Bartism Bats. But the extra damage is also probably not going to be relevant. So I guess we can wait. Whisper Agents. Alright, that's too bad. I would have kept back the Stalwart if we knew about that. Probably should not have uh, killed it in response to the surveil, should have let them surveil first. Alright, well, they've got some nice cards here. How close are they to adapting? 8 mana, currently only 5 lands in play. Guild Mage can tap stuff down, but only once they're already tapped. So this is definitely playing defense. Question is do we Griffin or do we kill the Reaper? I'll just say go. And see what they do. And if they don't do anything, then I'll just kill the Reaper end of turn. Yeah, that's a good one. So that's what the Red Splash is for. So Termander can adapt next turn potentially. Yeah, we're super far behind. Opponent's card quality was just a little bit better this game. Did we see what card they... I guess the Midnight Reaper was ours, I didn't even notice. And that's the card they stole with the Thief of Sanity, makes sense. Uh, can't Bedevil and Griffin. I eh, probably should have Bedeviled here, but I guess we're dead regardless. If we Bedeviled this, then we were still taking five. So we're just dead on board. Oh well. One Thief of Sanity hit was all they needed. I 
Yeah, time to crank some packs. So, a bit of a disappointing finish, 4 and 3. So didn't quite go the distance. I thought our deck was okay. Didn't have, like, a ton of insane bombs in it, but just a solid limited deck with good removal. Somewhat of a curve, and I guess a Midnight Reaper is kind of a source of additional card advantage. Could have used maybe an additional source uh, of card advantage or two, but there weren't too many in our pool that we could easily access. And what do we get out of our M20 booster? At least we... Ooh, never mind. I was about to say at least we don't have M20 fully unlocked. But there we go. I think this is my first uh, set of gems from M20. So at least the rares apparently I've got fully unlocked. Might still be missing a couple of mythics. Alright, well, time to start ranking up those gems for the next expansion. But for now, want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.